Hotstar, one of the biggest OTT platforms in India, upped its game three years ago when it stopped depending on catch-up TV alone and began rolling out specials. Starting with the first show, Roar of the Lion, it has steadily expanded its offering to, of originals. Spearheading this effort is Gaurav Banerjee, head content Disney Plus Hotstar and HSM Entertainment Network at Disney Star. Next up, we have an exclusive interview with him to decode Hotstar's content strategy. Welcome, Mr. Banji. The interviewer of the session is Shrikant Khandekar, the curator of Video Next Asia and co-founder and CEO at AFAX. Over to you, Mr. Khandekar. Hi. Uh, well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Gaurav. How are you? Hi, Shrikant. Great to be here. Good, good. good. Okay, so folks, you know, uh, Gaurav Banji really has, uh, is very uniquely placed to talk about the content, uh, especially with regard to OTT, because he's been with the Star TV network now for uh, 14 years. He has seen uh, and he has risen up the ranks and he was really like the boss of content. Uh, and so he has seen, and by the way, so I must tell you for the last many months, Star shows have been dominating the list of most watch shows, okay? And now Gaurav is, the, he's the head of content for Disney plus Hotstar, as well as the Hindi, um, you know, uh, network for the Hindi speaking markets, okay? On the main uh, TV network. So he looks after both of those aspects. And the interesting thing is that uh, a recent listing of popular shows on OTT also has star uh, uh, Disney hot star appearing prominently. So clearly something that uh, it says something. So I have a question about that, Gaurav, that can the experience from one medium be taken to another, especially because it has been said, uh, and perhaps with, with good reason, that when you do an OTT series, the kind of budget and the way you shoot it, it is more akin to shooting a film than akin to shooting a TV show, with most of which are shot in studios in, control, in, a, in a controlled environment. So, okay, Gaurav, let's start with this. You know, now Hotstar, I mean, it was Hotstar then, and now it's Disney and Hotstar. It's seven years old. Do you see any distinct phases that it has been through? That Because that is, in a way, it was one of the earliest uh, OTT to launch. So it would be a story of, uh, you know, the the rise and change in OTT as, uh, you know, as shown via hot stars. Could you tell us how it's, do you see any phases distinctly? So thanks, Shrikant. Yes, and this conversation is happening in an interesting week. Uh, we just turned seven and it has been an amazing ride because in some ways with hot star, we have been building the curated content market in streaming in India. And I think it's quite incredible that what would be described as a legacy media company has been at the forefront of building the streaming universe in India, right? And I think that has always been something very difficult for most companies to do because you have to, in a sense, disrupt a highly profitable business model yourself in order to be able to do that. And I think Star's journey in being able to stay ahead of this curve has been one of the things that for all of us at Star India has been a matter of immense pride. And I think concluding seven years here, we are thinking a lot about where does the next decade take us. So, so, as I look back so, so do, you see, do you see distinct phases over the last seven years? Yes, absolutely. I think the first phase that we went in was largely and totally AWOD, right? So we wanted to create the habit for people to watch long form content via the internet and largely on their mobile phones. Right. And we were really taking on conventional wisdom at that time because people believed that all that viewership was largely for short form content only. And you know, we challenged that, we said high quality entertainment which had been curated is also likely to work and is also likely to be consumed at scale. I think the second big thing that, that we have had from the beginning is that we, we have believed that a strong combination of sports and entertainment can walk hand in hand in offering a really powerful bundle to consumers. 
The third part of it has been our foray into exclusive original content. And next month, we mark an important anniversary for that because it would be three years since we started dropping hot star specials. And in these three years, we have had quite a few shows that our fans have appreciated and they've built a, you know, a legacy of their own, which we are deeply proud of and also hugely committed to scaling up as we go along. The fourth thing that I can immediately think of is this whole trend of making and releasing movies directly on streaming. And these are not just small films, but some of the biggest films with the biggest stars that we have been able to bring on to, uh, to the streaming uh, screens. And a fifth one, which has just started last week, is where we have taken some of the key entertainment pillars which have dominated the TV world and made exclusive versions of those available for only Disney plus Hotstar consumers. And we have started this with a Tamil show, Big Boss Ultimate, which is a, a fresh season of Big Boss, which has been done by the same anchor, Kamal Hassan, and okay. stars some of the biggest celebrities. And we are putting it only on Disney plus Hotstar. Having put the first episode as a simulcast on Star Vijay, our right. little TV channel, and equally putting it on Disney Plus Hotstar. So, you know, that's a, you know, those kind of experiments is frankly what has built uh, the leadership of Disney Plus Hotstar. So I, I wanted to ask you something about your specials, but before that, you know, you brought up this thing about releasing big movies, uh, you know, directly on your platform. But isn't that phase over now, now that theaters are likely to open and the, the Omicron thing seems to be declining? No, so we are delighted that theaters are open and consumers right. should have the choice on where they want to watch movies. And right. I think a lot of them will go to theaters and watch and many of them will prefer the comforts of their own home or the convenience of watching it on their mobile phones. Mm -hmm. I think movies will get continue to get created across the spectrum. So mm -hmm. as far as we are concerned, we are going to be really delighted to have movies which have first come on theaters to then also come on our platform. Equally, right. we remain committed to make movies exclusively for our platform as well. So I think we are, you know, we are getting into a phase where movies are going to be getting a theatrical distribution first and then get onto streaming. And then there are other movies which are also going to be made, which will go direct to streaming. So I think both of those will coexist. You know, the, you mentioned that it's it's now three years of uh, hot star specials, right? Why actually you're one of the earliest platforms to uh, to get started here, right? Why did uh, did not didn't hot star start with uh, specials or originals as they're more commonly called a little later than one would have expected? You started with the roar of the lion, if I remember, right? Three years back. That's right. So why why didn't you why did it take you so long to get started down that path? So I think in the beginning, we felt that we already had a lot of high quality Indian content. Right. Uh, so we were not really struggling with that because of right. the immense popularity of star shows. right? And right. We, we believed that we needed to build our brand and we needed to build the habit of people watching large scale drama on their mobile phones. Right? Right. None of that on scale existed in India before Hotstar started that journey, right? Okay. So I think the first thing from our growth point of view that we needed to establish was this habit and the convenience of being able to do this on scale and on mobile, right? That's very different from how this market has grown in other major markets in the world. Right. And that's where our initial focus was, right? I think after that, you know, we were, we are an Indian content company. We needed to figure out how to be able to do this on scale and do this really well. And, and I think that took time. It took effort and, uh, and we are proud of where, where we have reached, you know, and many, it's really true for many things, uh, Shrikan, that star has done over the years. You know, we were not the first programmers in Hindi, right? Mm -hmm. That was That's one of our competitors. We came in late. But once we did come in, we have managed to do, and even 20 years later, we're continuing to do a really good job of it. If you think about expansion into regional, we were again, not the first, 
right? The regional markets outside of Hindi were set up by other players. We entered later. Today, the story is that we do damn well on, on a majority of those regional markets. Sure. So yes, we have come in late, but we yeah. usually come in late and okay. we do a good job of it. Right. Point made, I agree. So tell me, is Catch-Up TV still very big on your platform? And do you see it as a unalloyed asset or is it a mixed blessing? I mean, does it's, it... It's, uh... it's very big on our platform. So for our top shows like Anupama, for example, a very large portion of their viewing happens on Disney Plus Hotstar. Okay. And that's we've always seen it as an asset because we see ourselves as a content company. You know, storytelling excellence is at the core of everything that we do at Disney Star. And therefore, we want to tell really, really good stories. Where the consumer watches it, we are really happy to leave it with the consumer, what is most convenient to the consumer. Right? Okay. So that's how we have always approached this issue. We are not worried about whether Anupama is being watched on our TV channels via linear TV distribution or on Disney Plus Hotstar. Fans can decide that and okay. fans should decide that. Great. Gaurav, let me take you back. You know, So you, you, be, you are on TV right, right through, right? And then this, uh, the Disney plus Hotstar assignment came along, right? I just want you to go back, you know, a couple of years. And when you, when you uh, looked at what lay before you, you know, it was a different medium. What struck you about the way in which you could create content, right? What were the constraints and what were the liberties that is, uh, you know, uh, OTT offered, as well as what did you see as, as the difference and the similarities in the way in which uh, content was consumed? Could you just go back and try to remember what it was like? Oh, of course, and uh, it's not been that long. So 2018, <laughs> 2018 yeah. we started work on this. So it's been about four years. Uh, 2019, we put out our, our first set of shows. Mm -hmm. And I think what was most interesting is that we could play with the length of series and the length of episodes. Right there, we could take a much more creative view of things that OTT allowed it for us to happen, number one. And I think that was a really big change from a creative point of view. Okay. I think the second thing that it has done is that a lot of the TV meter in our country has been on long running shows that make it a little difficult to attract a lot of talent that doesn't want to commit long-term on working on any one story. And that is understandable, right? Some people are interested in sprints and are good at sprints, right. others are good at running marathons. And, and there should be a market for both. So I think in from a, just a talent point of view, uh, the fact that the length of episodes could be broken down into seasons and therefore a show could be shot completely in a couple of months open this field up to a lot of writers, directors, and actors. And that has been great to watch. So I think these two things have been amazing. I think the third thing, which is incredibly amazing for us, is that we are doing this across languages. And therefore, today on Disney Plus Hotstar, there is an opportunity for a great Tamil show and a great Malayalam movie to be watched across the length and breadth of this country and people are watching a lot of things via mm -hmm. dubbing or via subtitles. And therefore a pan-India market for entertainment content is getting created and consumers are going seamlessly uh, from one piece of content to another. And you know we're doing this and many other competing streamers are also doing similar things. So, which is awesome. I think where we have a little bit of an advantage perhaps is that we are telling more original stories in different languages uh, than, than other people are right now, but that should change. I, I'm assuming that a lot of this will, will happen across the board uh, with many, many streamers uh, doing what, what we have begun to do in the last six months. Tell me one thing, you know, you move on decisions. So it is not that you headed the TV content and now you're doing this. You're doing this and you're doing that, right? And you flip from one role to the other don't you need a split personality to be able to manage this? No, not at all. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I have, I've been really excited about, about this job uh, because I think at the heart of it, things are very similar. You know, we want to be telling very good stories. 
we want our screenplays to be full of surprises. You know, right. we, want, we want our actors to be high quality. We are always thinking about what do we do with cinematography, with post-production, which is cutting edge. And I think all of these questions are very similar to, the, you know, the answers are very similar, whether it is on TV or on digital, because our consumers are demanding more from us across every medium. And, and they're similar as well, right? So I think, you know, a lot of people are watching a, some amount of TV and some amount of OTT, right? right. And that's that, that, that ratio keeps changing and, and it could be going from one to the other, but it, it's, it's not a zero sum uh, game. So it's exciting and, and the questions are very similar. Fundamentally, it's about good stories. Tell me one thing. So in the last three years, I mean, the audience is also, see, audience is still new to OTT. It's still a very, uh, it's still very, very young. A lot of people have probably been on it just for a year, year and a half. Okay, they come less frequently. But the people who have been there for three years, they've also evolved. Okay, so some of the stuff that totally shocked people now they take it more matter of factly. They're used to it. They, I mean, they have seen enough OTT. Does that create more pressure from a on, on the creative front? I mean, are the demands somehow different from uh, you know OTT viewers than they were three years ago? Are they more evolved in some way? I think consumers are evolving and so are we. And it's a it's a great process. So it's a very good time to be in this business, yes. to be telling stories and to be getting a more evolved response, which, which we are certainly getting. And, and we are listening very carefully to that. And hopefully as a result of that and as a result of this exchange, we're, we're getting better at our job. So I think there is a long way to go. Uh, we are striving for quality. Uh, these are early days and we have a lot of ground to cover because I think the future opportunity for storytellers in India is that we will tell stories of quality that will get unparalleled distribution scale sure. across the globe. And that's an amazing opportunity that shows from Israel, Turkey, Korea have taken. It's and really it's quite incredible huh? how well they get accepted in other countries. It's really amazing. Do you see, a, but you know, you have, uh, do you see um, a difference in the demands made by, uh, you know, viewers who have, who have paid for the content? So you're catering to both, right? Okay. That does it create any conflict in your mind when you're trying to satisfy X as well as Y? So I think we are creating all our content for paying subscribers on the TV side of it and also on the OTT side of it. Some of it uh, as, as part of the distribution calendar could end up being offered free on both sides. Right. But a large part of the high quality original branded content that we are creating as Disney Star is for paid subscribers. So that's always been really, really important. That's not something that we take lightly. Right, that even if it's a cable bill that someone is, is, is putting up every every month, that's a lot of money that is that that this household is paying for for their share of TV. Right. right. And equally true for our consumers on our app as well. So I think that that's a that's a big responsibility. We do not take it lightly. There are a lot many times we get shows wrong, right? But that's not because we're not trying hard enough to to get a hit show it's it's just that we've taken a few bets on uh, on where we think consumption and consumer taste is going and those bets have proven to be incorrect wrong and therefore we think hard about that learn from that and try very hard not to repeat those mistakes how how you know uh, i believe that you know you've been managing this whole process for the last two years uh, remotely right uh, but typically you think that uh, when there's a creative process, you need to be, uh, you know, in a room brainstorming, arguing, walk, you know, walking out and really intensely uh, bonding and actually creating. And with, uh, you know, it's it's a conflict that goes also into creation. All of that, right? The pressure of it. And now you're sitting and doing it all remotely. I mean, do you miss that? Of course, you miss that. You you want to be, you know. The, you want the pleasure and excitement of human interaction and and that's very hard to replicate on any kind of screen like this one mm -hmm. uh, so yes uh, i think all of us have have missed that 
but it hasn't proven to be detrimental in being able to create good stories because you know with every situation while there are some challenges there are also some advantages so someone like me for example spends a lot of their time talking to writers and creative people now if these meetings were happening in in my office you know i'm doing this conversation from my office in lower parel that perhaps means that a lot of these creative partners of ours who are having their offices let's say in andheri have to travel all the way from andheri to come and do this meeting with me in person now that in bombay shikant you know very well is is 4 uh-huh. hours wasted right uh, so you know those 4 hours spent on trying to get the creative to be better usually right. really works and as far as i am concerned you know i don't end up you know running late for meetings or waiting for other people to show up for meetings with me and all of that time i can spend watching content or reading scripts both of which are are i think really really more productive usage of executive time than sometimes meetings can tend to be i i i know what you mean okay last question we've run out of time gora but uh, so i want to ask you that where uh, when you look at uh, changing con- consumption trends going forward right what is what is the change that you see in 2022 2023 is there any some uh, you know has the fact that we've all been at home for two years as a fact that the world might open up in 22 more than it was how how is this or anything else what is the big change that you see or changes the uh, two or three interesting things that uh, you'd like to leave this uh, interview with so i am certainly hoping for and we are beginning to see a little bit of optimism coming and and god knows we all need that and i yes. expect that feeling of optimism exuberance in the air uh, is just amazing uh, to catch in our country and and hopefully in large parts of the world as we make start making a tentative recovery from you know what has been a very difficult last two years and i think that is great i think the second thing that the pandemic has done is it has accelerated a lot of changes that were happening in in society in any case and one of those really big changes has been how assertive women in our country have have been on on their aspirations and i think a lot of content that that we are seeing on the tv side on the digital side on the movie side underlines that in in a very very strong way and i think that has become bolder and far clearer today than it has been at any other time before this right so i think you know those were a couple of things that that i talk about and i think they they they'd be really important i think third thing which is kind of a little bit missing and and perhaps would be great to see is good high quality humor and comedic shows i think we are as an i think the audience demand for this is incredible uh, our ability to to make those on, on quality is a is 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 a challenge that we need to rise to and we'll hopefully uh, do that well uh, over the next few years great thank you so much gorav i think this has been uh, i've uh, you know learned a lot about hotstar and i find it as i said right at the beginning the fact that somebody has come from the tv side of the business <clears throat> and succeeded uh, you know on the ott side it's very interesting great i hope we'll catch up again uh, you know thank you shrigan you have a conversation thank you thank you audience thank you very much thanks a lot for staying with us and